This video will show you how to prepare your CAD model to be 3D printed on a DLP printer. If you are unfamiliar with DLP printers, check out my previous video where I go into detail on how a DLP printer cures the resin for each layer and how it builds the part up layer by layer until you reach your final product. The product shown here is a battery bracket for a friend's quadcopter. Now let's get started. This is Autodesk Fusion 360. It's a free CAD software for hobbyists and entrepreneurs. Here I'm going to open up a one finger knuckle, which is similar if you're familiar with brass knuckles. This is uh, basically a brass knuckle for a single finger that was created by Gravel Knives, who has uh, very generously provided the CAD model to me to be printed. So there you can see the engraving, Gravel Knives, a hole in the center for your finger, and various uh, multi-tool applications around the edges. On the side here you can see the various features this CAD software has. It's a very powerful software considering it's free. Um, here in the model you can uh, create new objects, um, you can model objects, and you can make assemblies, make sketches, uh, construction objects, um, pretty much everything you'd expect from a professional CAD software you get in this uh, free uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 CAD software. So we're going to go ahead and create our STL part. I'm going to uncheck the Send to 3D Utility. I don't want to do that right away. I'm going to select our object. Uh, you can hit the Preview Mesh if you want to take a look at it. I'm not. Uh, you pick your refinement and if you want to adjust it manually you can uh, not choose a preset and uh, pick your own. So go ahead and click OK. We're going to pick a file name for our STL. So we're going to call it our one nuck, and we're going to go ahead and save that. And as simple as that. Now we've got an STL file of our CAD object. So we'll go ahead and exit out and go to our next software, which is also produced by Autodesk, which is a mesh mixer. Now this I use to generate uh, supports. Uh, there are various different softwares you can use to generate supports. I prefer to use this software. So we're going to go ahead and import our part. Go ahead and scroll down to our file, one nuck, hit open. And now we have our STL file loaded into our Autodesk Mesh Mixer software. So we'll go ahead and uh, zoom in here so you can see the STL file actually uses a uh, um, series of triangles to create the part. And you can actually see the curvature is actually uh, very small uh, straight edges uh, that are, um, generate a curved edge. So depending on your refinement will determine how smooth your edges are. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to orient this part the way we want it printed. So we're going to go and hit uh, transform. And we want it at an angle about 10 degrees so that way we can uh, uh, not have such a big cross section for each layer when it's uh, printed. But uh, we're going to go ahead and put the lettering facing upwards so that way the support structures are not trying to support the letters um, as overhang. So we'll go ahead and position it just like that. And you'll see that the uh, scale is uh, just a little messed up. It uh, imported the inches dimensions and uh, just took them straight to millimeters. So one inch is one millimeter. So we got to fix that. We'll go down to uh, analysis here. And then we'll go up to units and dimensions. And you'll see we're in millimeters. We're going to go ahead and hit inches. And we're going to keep X, Y, and Z the same. So that way, now we're in inches. So then we'll go straight back to millimeters. And instead, this time, we'll tell it to uh, go ahead and convert the dimensions. Uh, this is that way once we uh, send it to our Creation Workshop software, it's in millimeters, uh, just like we like it. So now we're going to go ahead and create the support structure. So we're going to click on overhangs. Uh, there's some uh, custom settings and preset settings. So I've had uh, good results with the Replicator 2mm uh, preset. I've also had some good results with the uh, preset for SLA DLP printers and the Autodesk Ember. So right now, since we're going to print on a DLP printer, we'll do the DLP printer preset. And we'll go down and hit Generate Supports. So now you can see we have our uh, supports generated. Um, we want to go ahead and look around the model, make sure all aspects of the model are well supported, 
and that there's nothing uh, hanging over by itself or that there's no uh, wacky support structures uh, anywhere around the bottle. So you can see there's a very dense support structure uh, which is very good. So provide the model with uh, plenty of stability as it's printed and peeled off of um, each layer in the build process. So you see the tips of uh, the supports all make good contact with the model which is good and so uh, this support structure looks very pleasing. You can go ahead and hit uh, convert to solid if you want to uh, be able to play around with the meshing uh, tools and mesh mixer and uh, we're going to go ahead and delete this guy on the right. Uh, he's kind of out there so um, you can go ahead and do that by holding control and uh, clicking on the support. So now we want to go ahead and uh, export so we'll go to file export and you see now we're going to save this again as a STL, but this will be a STL file with a support structure. So we'll go ahead and add the little with supports bit to the name and hit save. And that's it. Now our model has supports. So once it uh, computes everything, we'll go ahead and exit out and go to the final third uh, program. Again, all this software that I've used so far is free. Uh, for download off of the internet. So you can check out the uh, description, uh, provide links to all these uh, pieces of software. So in uh, Creation Workshop we're going to go to uh, open and we're going to open up our one nuck with supports file. We hit open and that's going to import our file into Creation Workshop software. So you can see it uh, brought everything in, looks very uh, nice and pretty. Um, so and first thing we want to do is uh, get it positioned right, it's already in the center, but we want to make sure it's on the bottom of the, of the uh, build area. So we go ahead and hit that button, and that just ensures that the model is sitting flat on the bottom. Uh, if you want a mirror, you can do that. If you need to scale it uh, to account for shrinkage, you can do that. Uh, rotate it again if you need to adjust the position. So. Right now we're going to go ahead and we want to increase the surface area that's in contact with the build platform to make sure the part stays attached to the build platform. So we're going to add a support raft by uh, clicking that button and so that just adds um, about two millimeters worth of material um, all the way around the park. So that way you can see the entire bottom portion of the part will be attached to the build platform. Next we want to adjust our slicing configuration. Uh, if you need to configure your machine, you can do it there. We're going to go ahead and verify our slicing configurations the way we want it. We're going to do a 50 micron layers. Our base exposure time is going to be 12 seconds, bottom exposure is 24 seconds, and we're going to do 15 bottom layers. Uh, next thing we all need to do is make sure the export to CWS is checked because that's going to allow us to send this file to the Raspberry Pi in the 3D printer to be able to print it. If you need to modify the G code, you can do that here. And these will all be used uh, once the slicing occurs. Uh, it will use those G code segments to create each layer of G code commands. So we're going to go ahead and save our creation workshop file. And we're going to call that one nuck. Uh, actually, I think we're going to be a little more detailed. We'll call it a uh, one finger nuck. So go ahead and hit save and uh, once we do that we will be ready to slice the object. So depending on how fast your computer is, uh, I might slice uh, quickly, I might slice slowly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up here in a second so we don't have to sit here and watch this uh, slice uh, super slow. Uh, if you're not using a Raspberry Pi in your printer and you need your laptop to stay connected to your printer during the printing process, you would uh, simply hit the connect a button up in the top left corner and once you're connected to your printer and you've sliced your model you'd be able to hit the play button and it would begin the printing process and your laptop would begin sending g-code commands to your printer. So now we're uh, sliced and good to go. Our estimated build time is about an hour and 40 minutes so not too bad and uh, we do have to save the file uh, one more time to make sure all that uh, g-code and slice uh, get into our print. Uh, but first we want to go take a look at our slice view and make sure everything looks uh, the way we want it to. But uh, 
Yep. So we'll go look at our slice view, and here you can see the images it'll be used to create the uh, part, and now we can go look at our G code. We can see all our settings uh, that we previously chose. I've made it into our G code, and we'll just scroll down real quick and make sure that uh, all the pieces of G code that we had uh, made it into our file. So now we'll just scroll through uh, all the various layers that will be used to create this part. Uh, the big thing you want to do here is you want to make sure the very first layer is in fact uh, the bottom of the part, again to ensure that it is on the bottom of the build area. And finally we will save it. Yes, we want to override it. Be sure to comment, thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this video and check out the last two steps where I actually print the part and the post print processing of that part once it's finished printing. Thanks for watching.